so uh, a very good afternoon everyone and, uh, and uh, at the outset i must thank uh, uh, bansi sabu sir for giving this opportunity in this wonderful meeting and uh, my sincere thanks to the chairperson for the kind introduction so i'll be speaking on a topic that is adipose tissue as an endocrine organ it's more of a theoretical thing but a very important uh, relevant thing and all of us must know about this uh, uh, thing so uh, first i will tell why it is an endocrine organ and what is exactly an endocrine organ and then i'll discuss why adipose tissue is an important endocrine organ so if we see the definition of an endocrine organ uh, it is defined as an organ which synthesizes hormones that are secreted directly into the blood there is no ducts for release of this hormones they directly release into the blood and travel and exert action at distant tissues and organs so that is the exact definition of an endocrine organ so if we see the adipose tissue per se adipose tissue now we know that adipose tissue is not a uh, very inert uh, structure in our body it is metabolically very very active it is not only the fat we see from outside but uh, it's a very highly metabolic tissue in our body and it produces and secretes a wide range of mediators that we call it as adipokines and some are hormones in that that acts on distant targets they have autocrine and paracrine effect but the most important is that the hormones or the adipokines released from them are directly poured into the blood and they act on the distant uh, sites like liver skeletal muscle pancreas brain and the cardiovascular system and that's why we can call it uh, adipose tissue as an endocrine organ and uh, if we if we see the vastness of the endocrine organ uh, in comparison to other endocrine system in our body it is the largest true endocrine organ of our body so this is a very simplistic diagram of an adipocyte which is an adipose cell it, it it secretes various things apart from just storage of fat so initially maybe around uh, 30 years or 20 years we were knowing that adipose site only stores fat there are fat droplets in them but now we know that it secretes various other things for example hormones like leptin adiponectin resistin there are some cytokines like tnf alpha interleukin 6 substrates uh, from the from breakdown of the fat we have fatty acid and glycerol we have some enzymes that converts uh, testosterone to estradiol like aromatase and 11 beta hsd1 that converts the cortisol to cortisol and then there are some other uh inflammatory markers like pi1 angiotensinogen retinol binding protein uh, factor d and adipsin all are secreted from the adipocyte to name a few there is a vast number of thing that has been secreted by adipocytes so uh i'll be discussing two important things now what is their action and what are the types of adipose tissue adipose tissue action if we tell grossly it has got three important function one is the body weight homeostasis and the energy homeostasis of the body so it is the weight and energy homeostasis of the body is highly regulated by this adipose tissue and it the secretion from coming from the adipose tissue the second is the endocrine function and uh, i'll i'll discuss some of the endocrine hormones which are released from adipose tissue mostly leptin adiponectin interleukin tnf and all i won't go into details of that otherwise you will be bored to death so i'll just touch upon the important hormones which are or important adipose cytokines which are released from the adipose tissue uh, adipose tissue be, beside this energy homeostasis and endocrine function they have a very important role in immuno regulation and inflammation and probably we have known more uh, in the last pandemic or the in the in the current pandemic that's the covid that obesity and inflammation are highly interrelated so these three important actions are not independent of each other they are actually very much integrated and uh, uh, dependent on each other so uh, by various cytokines and adipokines and the major function of this three depends on where the adipose tissue is located what are the types and where they are distributed coming to a very basic thing what are the different types of adipose sites which we find in our health and uh, body so basically there are important two adipose sites one is the brown and one is the white brown as we all know it's it's rarely found in adult humans mostly found in neonates or in 
infants uh, it's mostly uh, destined to do thermogenesis that's a non shivering thermogenesis by the expression of uncoupling protein in the mitochondria they basically if you see the diagram on the right side the lower panel the brown fat has has are relatively smaller in size but they have more number of mitochondria in them and there are multiple fat droplets in them and they are mostly the mitochondria has got an expression of uncoupling protein that diverts the atp towards heat generation so they actually produce heat and uh, the second one is white adipose tissue whatever we see in our body both outside and uh, inside it is the white adipose tissue white adipose tissue uh, usually provides the mechanical protection and the insulation uh, they protect the various viscera various organs they provide a mechanical protection to our body apart from that it has got endocrine function that i uh, that i have already enumerated that it secretes a lot of adipokines and hormones and there are some physiological function related to fat metabolism uh, glucose metabolism and also protein metabolism now there is nothing white and black in that there is uh, there is no clear cut thing like uh, this one is white this one is brown in fact it has been found that in adult human being in the white adipose tissue there are pockets of cells where the brown uh, adipocytes are found or something like brown adipocytes are found and uh, the terminology of base adipose tissue has come into force and uh, and the recent literature has has a vast description about this base adipose tissue because we know that white brown adipose tissue is usually not present in adults but we can uh, we can rely on the base adipose tissue and there are very many researches which are going on how to activate this base uh, adipocytes in producing thermogenesis so that it can help in body weight reduction so there is as i have told there is no white and black in that it's not like like white adipose tissue is always white adipose tissue brown adipose tissue is always brown adipose tissue in fact there are pockets of brown adipose tissue in white so we call it as base and they are all dependent on a dynamic equilibrium that is uh, sometimes the pockets of adipose brown adipose tissue gets more uh, prominent and we call it as more a base adipose tissue if it is less we call it as more of a whitened uh, base or a more of a hypertrophic white adipose tissue in fact uh, inactivity obesity calorie excess can actually divert this adipose tissue towards a worse white adipose tissue and whitened uh, brown adipose tissue and if we are stimulating with exercise if there is a uh, cold exposure the body temperature is going down then probably some of this brown or the base adipose tissue is predominant so Uh, and they will secrete a better uh, uh, adipose cytokine so when there is a over calorie excess we will have increase in the leptin uh, increase in the inflammatory markers and lowering of the adiponectin and anti inflammatory markers whereas in calorie restriction in cold temperature probably our uh, uh, leptin will go down and adiponectin and the better markers will be elevated so they are in constant uh, uh, transition among themselves so the second part is these were the types of adipocytes now the adipocytes differ according to the distribution also for example there are two important sites of distribution one is the visceral adipocytes one is the subcutaneous adipocytes visceral adipose tissue have got high concentration of inflammatory markers like interleukin 6 and plasminogen activator inhibitor whereas the subcutaneous fat have got higher concentration of more of this hormonal thing like leptin and adiponectin are mostly uh, secreted from the subcutaneous fat so uh, out of this two fat a visceral fat is actually uh, more metabolically active or metabolically derogatory actually so compared to the subcutaneous fat these are the things which are uh, secreted by the white adipose tissue there are n number of things are secreted this is the whole list of the adipocytokines which are secreted uh, noted among them is adiponectin leptin resistin bisphatin il6 and tnf alpha this this is a long list of all the things that has been secreted by this uh, uh, white adipose tissue uh, as i have told i am not going into details of this because they are very basic uh, uh, basic sciences and uh, they have more of molecular 
importance rather than the clinical significance but uh, nevertheless i'll be touching upon the leptin adiponectin and uh, to some extent the il6 and the tnf alpha so endocrine effects of adipocyte secreted factors uh, basically we have discussed about white adipose tissue and the base and the uh, brown adipose tissue white adipose tissue the major secretory action is on the brain on the pancreas on the cardiovascular system liver and the mus musculature in the brain they are uh, mostly regulate the appetite which i'll be discussing very shortly temperature regulation and glucose homeostasis in the pancreas they have got beta cell survival and insulin secretion action in the heart there is inflammation vascular remodeling and vascular tone in the liver and the uh, muscle they have more of glucose metabolism action lipid metabolism and the insulin signaling pathway base in the brown adipose tissue are mostly thermogenic but nevertheless they secrete uh, various cytokines also and uh, or adipokines and they have more favorable action on the liver and muscle uh, insulin resistance insulin signaling and the lipid metabolism in comparison to the white adipose tissue adipokines so coming to the most important adipokine or the most important adipose secreted hormone is uh, leptin leptin is is relatively new molecule because it was uh, uh, discovered in 1995 the leptin uh, 1994 the obese gene or the leptin receptor gene has been uh, diagnosed followed by in 1995 it's the leptin gene and in 1995 immediately after the discovery of leptin uh, they thought that probably by giving leptin we can reverse adipo uh, we can reverse obesity so for that there was a rapid development of recombinant leptin but unfortunately that uh, that uh, did not succeed and obesity was not as simple as only leptin deficiency because there are more chances of leptin resistance to that so uh, the recombinant leptin theory actually failed uh, uh, quite badly unless and otherwise there was some lipodystrophic uh, diabetes or there were some congenital or uh, you know, leptin deficiency otherwise leptin recombinant leptin is of uh, lesser use or no use in our clinical practice leptin is uh, secreted from adipocytes we know and it is preferentially secreted according to the uh, food or in the hypertrophy or in the obesity status so there are two types of adiposity so when it is in the fed state the the adipocyte is larger and they may secrete more amount of leptin if it is in the faster state the leptin level is low leptin is uh, circulated in the blood their peripheral targets in the beta cell immuno cells and others which i have just discussed but most important now it is recognized that probably it is crossing or it is crossing the blood brain barrier and it has got four or five important action in the hypothalamus and most important them is satiety or the hunger center regulation followed by glucose and lipid metabolism sympathetic nervous system activation and other neuroendocrine function but most important is the appetite regulation these are the pathway of appetite regulation like leptin acts on the leptin receptor it activates the pro pu melanocortin to be converted to alpha msh by processing enzyme or the pc1 processing enzyme then this alpha msh acts on the melanocortin 4 receptor signal and reduces the appetite <coughs> whereas other hormone like agouti related peptide in fact blocks this mc4 receptor signaling and increases the appetite if you can see the green arrows in all this position there are defined mutation at this each point and that can lead to obesity for example there are almost seven or eight monogenic forms of obesity have been uh, found out one of them is related to leptin uh, mutation or uh, leptin abscess another is the leptin receptor mutation the others are pomc mc4r and other Uh, mutation that can lead to morbid obesity so uh, in leptin uh, deficient mice probably or leptin deficient person with morbid obesity probably recombinant leptin will be of help otherwise it has got no action per se beside the appetite regulation leptin has got another very important and a very significant action on the uh, the gonadal system the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis has been affected it has been shown that normal adipose tissue secretes normal leptin level of leptin leptin acts on the hypothalamic kisspeptin neuron that secretes the gnrh or gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, is raised that can enhance the lhfsh and finally to increase in the testosterone uh, 
but in hypertrophic or in adipose tissue which is malformed or uh, that is uh, that is larger or hypertrophic because of obesity they have more of insulin resistance uh, they have more of leptin resistance and this leptin resistance can down regulate the hypothalamic cisleptin uh, axis and there is reduction of the gnrh and reduction of the testosterone and one of the, the mechanism this mechanism has been postulated to be the mechanism for late onset hypogonadism or the uh, so called andropause which we know because of obesity and diabetes we have low testosterone level so probably this is the mechanism which leptin is playing in that uh, condition leptin is now approved only for genetic leptin deficiency and leptin deficiency secondary to rare forms of lipohypertrophic uh, diabetes unfortunately we see this uh, syndromes very very rarely and hardly ever so the use of recombinant leptin has never picked up as it was thought of few uh, few last slides on other uh, markers which are secreted like adiponectin it has a strong negative correlation between plasma adiponectin and uh, human fat and mass adiponectin is basically a good uh, ad adipocytokine it stimulates fatty acid oxidation glucose uptake in the skeletal muscle and reduces the insulin resistance suppression of hepatic glucose output through the activation of the mp kinase can happen it has got almost like two types of receptors skeletal muscle contain both but liver primarily expresses the adipo r2 central and peripheral action of leptin and adiponectin are actually uh, are actually reciprocal in action if you see the adipose tissue uh, secretes adiponectin which has got better cardiovascular function improve insulin sensitivity and improves beta cell function in contrast to leptin bisphatin and dp4 can actually adversely affect this three system so they act reciprocally in not only in the periphery but also in the central nervous system tnf alpha is exactly not secreted from uh, adipocyte it is secreted from macrophages tnf alpha can impair insulin signaling in hepatocytes and adipose tissue chronic treatment with tnf alpha decreases insulin stimulated glucose uptake in rat skeletal muscles and this is how insulin resistance develops so in contrast to lean adipose tissue the obese adipose tissue has more amount of inflammation inflammatory macrophages they can secrete more amount of inflammatory markers and can induce insulin resistance in both the liver and the muscle level so it's not only with the obesity the adipocyte size increases it is infiltrated with more of inflammatory macrophages and that leads to more of tnf alpha and interleukin 6 and insulin resistance interleukin 6 is again a inflammatory marker secreted from adipose tissue concentration are higher in visceral adipose tissue elevated levels are associated with increased risk of cardiovascular outcome and uh, it inhibits the insulin signaling pathway angiotensin is another molecule which is secreted directly from the adipose tissue and we know angiotensin 2 has got recognized effect on cardiovascular function uh, and also in hypertension plasminogen activator inhibitor mostly secreted by visceral adipose tissue plasma pi1 level increases in proportion to visceral adiposity and there is a link between pi1 and uh, insulin resistance central obesity and cardiovascular diseases the last molecule which i'll discuss is registin it is structure of registin is strikingly similar to that of adiponectin and recently there are a lot of talks about registin because there was an anti registin antibody which has been developed that is shown to reduce blood glucose and improve the insulin uh, action in uh, mice or diet induced obesity but again it's in the uh, basic research stage implicated in the pathogenesis of diabetic complication and diabetes so i won't be discussing other adipocytokines as it would be too vast and not clinically oriented so coming to the end of my talk the key points which i can Uh, give it to you is that adipose tissue is not an in, uh, uh, inert organ it's a important and a vast large endocrine organ it secretes many hormones with effects on the brain pancreatic beta cells liver skeletal muscle and also on the cardiovascular system the major function of adipocytes are three that is energy homeostasis insulin resistance and modulation of inflammation in obesity hypertrophic adipocyte accelerate a chronic pro inflammatory profile with altered secretion of adipokines thereby exacerbating the cardiometabolic diseases preclinical and clinical studies show that activating or inhibiting this 
signaling or specific adipokines could be beneficial, but none has been actually uh, practiced or tried in uh, human beings in large trials. So the future is bright, but till now nothing has transferred into a big clinical practice. So with that I'll end. Thank you for the patient hearing.